Welcome to Behind the Mic, the deep dive behind radio theology. Here are your hosts, Darren Earlywine, Lisa Graff, and Ryan Allward. Christmas cheer, stress management, and no spin November. Wow. That's where we're going here on Behind the Mic. Welcome back to the uh, spiritual deep dive expose. Mm-hmm. Or whatever. No, I don't know. <laughs> Just keep yeah, talking. Yeah, okay. It's fine. Welcome back to Behind the Mic here for the November 10th edition of Radio Theology. Pastor Darren with Ryan and Lisa. Thanks for listening in. And guys, we did. We had a couple different topics this week. A lot of the show we spent talking about uh, how early is it too, uh, is, what's too early for Christmas cheer? Yeah. I mean, you want to deck the halls. You want to string the lights. You want to, you want to, uh, you want to hang the stockings by the chimney with care. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lisa, you jumped in pretty early. I did. I Ryan. went full out Buddy the Elf. <laughs> Oh, gosh. <laughs> you released a Christmas album. I did. Go yeah. get that right now. Go though, get it. It's straight fire. Go check it out. Ryansongs.com and or just go to Spotify or iTunes or wherever. wherever. Music. Indiana Christmas is the, the album. Of the album. album. Yep. And I I was, I, I well, I'm not going to say I was converted. <laughs> I want to say I came back a little more s- center of the aisle. Oh, okay. okay. All okay. right. To grab a political uh, sure. phrase. Yeah. <laughs> I have held I have held myself strong that I don't listen to Christmas music or mm-hmm. turn on my Christmas lights until the night of Thanksgiving. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that. But I listen to Christmas music literally 24 hours a day, seven days a week from that point until the day after Christmas. Boxing Day, the yeah. 26th. Yeah, because I can't shut it off on Christmas. I got I to gotta glow in the momentum of All it. All the way through. I, yeah. I've been hearing you talk about this, though, and I think your issue that you're very like hardline on okay. is exterior illumination. That's what I've heard you talk a lot about. Like That tends to be the trigger for you. Christmas mm-hmm. music, I think you can get down with because you're a drummer. You're, you're like this hip like pastor guy. Like You, you like mm-hmm. music. You're a hip guy. Pastor guy, yes. that's what he just yeah. said. Thanks, right? I didn't yeah. want to gloss well, over that. I, I think it's the it's the lighting. You know what just happened in me as you go started ahead. to, to go say ahead. this? Go ahead. Mm. My my brain saw a little sliver of wiggle room mm. to get out from underneath my own convictions. Okay. Oh, All yes. Right. All right. So I, good. I agree. Because here's the deal. I just like, <laughs> I don't like to drive in my neighborhood uh-huh. and see Christmas lights before Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm like, no, no, we're going to do Thanksgiving. We're going to be grateful. We're going to focus on that. We got a whole freaking month to light our houses up. I think it's yeah, it's this awkward season of post Halloween, pre Thanksgiving. Yeah, I think it's like Christmas actually happens in those three weeks. Then for one day, it's like, hey, it's Thanksgiving. Then Black Friday comes, yeah. and it's like it's Christmas again. I yeah. think Thanksgiving kind of gets left out. See, and that has been part of the my my platform. Okay, mm-hmm. is that here's a great Earl McManus quote. Go right? ahead. No blessing, no matter how great, will ever penetrate a heart that is void of gratitude. Ooh. That's good. Say it again. Okay. No blessing, no matter how great, will ever penetrate a heart that is void of gratitude. Mm. One of the big things I teach my kids, we pray about it every single night. They end each day with it, is what am I grateful for today? Mm -hmm. So I'm raising them to live a life of gratitude. Because if you can be grateful for everything that that you have and that you're in, and you can be grateful for where everyone else is in and and what's happening for them, you can have true happiness. You don't live a comparison game. Mm. And all the blessings, you can get them the full weight of what they are. So I'm big on gratitude. Yep. Yeah. So I think what it is, is I've been irritated that our culture's like, hey, let's celebrate the devil at Halloween. Although, whatever devil, I like Reese's Pieces. So, <laughs> Skittles and Sour Patch. You know what else is the devil? What's that? Diabetes. <laughs> wow. It comes from a lot of candy. The sugars. The sugars. Uh, so, <laughs> I hate that we go Halloween and then boom, all of a sudden there's all the Christmas decorations in Target. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, okay. what about the moment where we get together and allow gratitude to shape our life? Mm. But, Lisa. You have opened my eyes <laughs> just this week to the fact that, you know what? Every time I, even just a tinge of jingle bells in mm-hmm. my life, mm-hmm. it's it makes me happy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's something about it that's so, I don't know, it's part nostalgia, mm-hmm. okay. uh, but then it's part just everywhere you look is a reminder of little baby Jesus mm. and everything that that means. And I, and then since having kids, so now I've got a five year old and a two and a half year old, Mm -hmm. and already seeing the wonder. Like they each have a tiny Christmas tree in their bedrooms. And my two year old's like, Mommy, it's so cute. And I'm like, (laughs) Mm. Oh, you're so cute, buddy. And I just get all happy. Uh And it makes me forget about all the bad stuff that I'm trying to work through. Mm. You know, (laughs) I really needed Christmas and I needed to feel. The hope and joy of Christmas. You need a little Christmas right this very minute. 
candles right. in the window. Exactly. Someone at the spin. And it's all right. in Christmas. I'm, I'm tracking with you. Exactly. Yeah. There's a reason why they wrote that song. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yes, I need a little Christmas now. Mm. I think that's what the <laughs> wow. lyric says. It's very emphatic. Right? Now. Mm. How, does, how, does, how does Jesus go from 33 dead, alive again, off the grid, and then he comes back as a baby in December? Good grief. Try to right. explain that to a five-year-old. Like, back in April, we were... Very grateful for the empty tomb. Oh. Grown mm. man bearded Jesus. Yep. Blazingly white, dazzling new clothes. Yes. Mm-hmm. He's gone for a little while. Right. And then he's <laughs> in baby form again in yeah. December. That's a good yes. point. That's tough for a kid to get Can their mind Can you imagine? Around. Yeah. Head, you know, a kid wrapping their head around that? Like, yeah. wow. Yeah. Anyway. But I do, I do want to also stake, put my stake in the ground for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm a thing, my birthday is always near Thanksgiving. Mm. So I am a huge Thanksgiving wow. fan because I always got to celebrate my birthday and my sister's birthday same day. Yeah, and so we well, always fun. had family and togetherness and presents yes. on Thanksgiving. And, food, and gravy. I Oof. Lo- mm. some of my most favorite memories are from Thanksgiving and will always be. So towards the end of every year, it's a really good time for you. Oh, you got yeah. a lot I'm to celebrate. My best life. Right? Yeah. So I'm like, let's start early this year. Hmm. Yeah, I, I get it, and I guess the thing we talked about too. We, we didn't hit a ton on the show. Uh, we talked about it this week as we were prepping is the idea that it's interesting because like, you know, intellect, like cognitively, yeah. you know, Jesus is here now. And I said this in the thought of the day, right? Jesus is here now, year round and for eternity. Yep. You would say, yes, bubble C on the Scantron. Right. Mm-hmm. It's the second week in a row. I think Scantron is wow. made. Oh, yeah. Hands. So yeah. good. Uh, that's, that's truth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But there's something about this season. There's something about the decor- decorations. There's something about the music. There's something about the sights and the smells and the sounds of it. That for you, it's not like it's not like I forgot that that's true. It's just it's it's adding like the icing on the cake. Is it just the emotion of it? What is? Yeah, it? it's just the extra layer. And then I also I've been um, really surrounded. Uh, uh, how do I say this? Well, huh. um, I've been having a struggle with seeing only my poor circumstances. And um, so I, when I'm looking around my life right now, I'm seeing the dumpster fire in the shambles and all of the pain in the piles and all the things. Cousin Eddie emptying out the latrine into basically, the sewer. Yeah. Basically, yeah. that's what I'm seeing. And I know there's more to that. There's m- way more to my life than the mess. And so um, part of my reason for decorating for Christmas is because it always does remind me of hope. And so, um, and then lately the Holy Spirit's been just prompting me all the time. I can't tell you how many times a day, like this, the little whisper is going, keep your eyes on me. Like, what are you looking at? Hmm. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. And so, um, that's why I was like, we're decorating for Christmas and we're doing it now. (laughs) We're doing it now. And I went through the whole day and decorated everything. And I even, I did, I broke the rule about exterior illumination. Mm -hmm. Usually not my category. Mm. Usually my husband does it, but I wanted to surprise him. And um, I did. He did not like what I had done. Wow. And I said, well, I could fix it, but I'm not going to. <laughs> How aggressive did you go, Ryan? You saw it. I saw it. Yeah. I, I was on see, a... I love this story because I feel like God was like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ryan's going to need to see your exterior illumination mm-hmm. and the Christmas tree set up in the playroom. What happened, Ryan? I was going on a walk around. Our na- <laughs> Lisa and I live in the same neighborhood. And I was going on a walk. Which I think was God prompted. It was like we need to we need to get out. Huh? Let's go on a walk together. You're a naturalist, like to be out I am, in nature, I'm, talk I'm to the Lord. Very much a naturalist. Okay. That's where I connect with God a lot. And I also hadn't had the time to, or no, I did have the time. I hadn't yet listened to my own Christmas album, okay. start to finish. I'd like prepped all the promo for it and all that stuff, but I just needed some time to listen to it and and thank God for that opportunity and that project. And I'm coming around. Your street, Lisa, and I'm like, oh, the graphs have some. Is it, wait, is that a Christmas tree what? in the front window? <laughs> is that like beautiful, like icicle lights on the on the front tree? Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. wow, Christmas is here. Here, mm. thank you, Lisa. Yeah, I knew you. I knew you had ears. done it. <laughs> right, it's it was in, in my ears. ears, and it's in your spirit now. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. good yeah. stuff right there. Yeah. All right, listen. Here's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah, and then a bright star shone above your house. That's right. <laughs> Three random dudes on camels showed yeah, up. A camel came around from the backyard. Where do you want this frankincense? <laughs> <laughs> put put it in the pile with the others, grease ball. My friend, uh, my friend Mark Moore, who lives out in California, he posted on Instagram this uh-huh. week. He said it's Sinatra season. 
Oh. Sinatra. So he says what he does is between huh. uh, Halloween mm-hmm. and okay. Thanksgiving, yeah. he listens to like Sinatra and like different like classics like that. Okay. Which Sinatra is, Christmas? No. Or just in general. Just in like general. Like that, old that genre eyes. of music. Yeah. And it's kind of like it warms them up huh. for like Christmas music. Mm. I thought about <laughs> dabbling with it <laughs> so primer. I wouldn't break my own rule. Yes. I don't know. I'll see. Ryan, I'm excited. Uh, your album just came out, yes. Indiana Christmas, yes. on Friday. Uh-huh. Uh, I do suggest you go check it out. It is straight fire. What I, I think what I'll do, I just need to justify myself. I think I'm going to start listening uh-huh. to your album this week. That's adorable. Not because I am uh, <laughs> listening to Christmas before Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just because I'm honoring your new release. Oh, okay. you're just, yeah, you're. Supporting, a, you're being a good friend. You're and acknowledging we'll check, our yeah. friendship. We'll check yes. back in with me next week, yep. see how I feel about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because here's what I don't want to have happen. Go ahead. I don't want to get <laughs> mid-December and be like, mm. I'm tired of Christmas music and yeah. I still got to power through a week. Yeah. Like I want that feeling where I get sad on Christmas because I'm like, it goes away yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> I've got a friend who has a year-round Christmas music playlist. It's not all he listens to, yeah. but he's like, I just love Christmas music. Right. It puts me in a good mood. It does. You know what? You all can... right, dang it. Okay. I'm 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 a free American. Yeah. I can listen to Christmas music whenever yeah. I want. Yeah. You don't need but to stick to rules that, that don't side. matter. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Well, I can guarantee you at my house, by the by the time we record this episode next week, I can guarantee you my house will be Christmified. Good. <laughs> I hope so. I, yeah. And my wife does Christmas right. Good. Although if she buys another tree, oh, um, we she have a lot. We are going to live in a forest. Does she have a lot. I think we have five now. Wow! Like oh, in one in each room, or like what's going on? But there's one in the sunroom. Okay. Last year there was one in the office. Okay. There is one in the main room. Mm-hmm. Yes. Where we have that the traditional tree. There's one in our okay. stable then where <laughs> baby Jesus. Is. It's a real life baby. <laughs> then there's one. <laughs> wow. Then there's one in the front window of the house. All right. Uh-huh. Then at one point the boys Gosh, all had a little small is, tree in their room. Lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't count those now. Then she does put up a little pencil. Like small tree mm-hmm. in the entryway, like a Charlie Brown tree. Or no, just it's like just a, like a decorative little. I think it's like called like a pencil a, tree, like a spruce. Like I don't know. Fir. I'm just saying. It's called a pencil tree, right? There's a lot of freaking trees in my house, I but I love it. I grew up. My mom. If my mom were a color, she would be beige. Mm. And so, <laughs> aw. But we she's an amazing, her. amazing woman. I love, love you, that, that quote is not original with me. Okay. Okay. My mom doesn't decorate. My mom's not flashy. Okay. Yeah. So like, like I don't even know. We had pictures on our walls growing up. Like, yeah. It was just, that's not her jam. Mm-hmm. So I I love my house at Christmas. So I love it. Mm. I love it. You listen, do what you want. Yep. You need a little Christmas cheer. Mm-hmm. The spiritual point of this segment of the yes, show here we go. was that Jesus is here for you now. He's yep. here for you year round. There it and is. He's here for you for eternity. Nice. Hallelujah. Way to go. That's where we're going. Way put to little, bring it all. Put a little bow on that. Ho. Mm-hmm. Back around. All right, Lisa, we also talked about in Lisa's pieces this week about stress management. Oh. And yeah. you were disappointed that the word management meant to cope. Hmm. Yeah, it really bothered me okay. somehow because, um, and then even when I talked to uh, Jen, the new executive director of Blackbird Vision, yeah. I said, yeah, oh, this really bothered me. And she's like, well, it does, doesn't mean that to me. To me, manage means just you, you tell it where to go. And I'm like, okay, yeah, in theory, yes. Mm-hmm. You, you, that's how you, you tell your stress where to go and your time where to go. But for my life, my stress is telling me where to go and how to feel, and I just I am frustrated by that, and I'm trying to figure out a way around it or through it. But so I did got, you hmm. did, it's for you then? Is it you wanted to like dominate your stress? No, I don't need to dominate it, but I don't want to feel like it's taking control and and you know causing me to do all the things that it is actually causing me to do in my life. Like I want to have the freedom and space to to live. Fully and peacefully without something called stress, like shouting at me that I'm doing it wrong and I'm not enough. Hmm. Hmm, <laughs> Baxter, you have you have taken me there to a deep to the core. Okay. I don't know. I <laughs> Well you you've now you made me you've made me more intrigued by the way that that Jen sees it. Yeah. So say more about what she said. She doesn't see it as a negative. She sees because she is a, uh, she is a. Uh, she's our friend who she's a, is. She's our executive director of the yes, ministry. Yeah. Taskmaster. Taskmaster. I say she's an administrative and structural ninja. Mm-hmm. Ninja. Uh, yes. On the uh, in, in the five voices or fivefold ministry function from Ephesians five chapter four, she's a teacher, or another word you could say is a guardian. So she is a a guardian and uh, and just amazing with systems and structures. So she manages. Yeah. Everything. Everything. It's her it's her superpower. Exactly. 
So she sees that term, and for her, it's, it means what? Say more about that. Um, for for her, it means oh, I'm just going to manage the stress the way she manages an intern. You know, like she tells the intern what to do. She gives assigns the projects and the deadlines. So and she's the, in charge. She's in charge of it. So in that in that situation, mm-hmm. she sees it as stress management is. I'm in charge of my stress. Yes, exactly. But you don't want to be in charge of your stress. Right. I don't, yeah, I don't want to be in charge of my stress. Then well, who, no, then I do, who would no, be? I do want to be in charge of my stress. I don't want my stress to be in charge of me. And that's where my frustration and struggle is. But it broke down in the word. It broke down in the word because okay, so the this, word means to cope. Okay, so what does, when you hear cope, change the word, what is it? Oh, that's good. Well, it's, to me, it feels like I'm barely surviving. If I'm coping with it, I'm surviving it against all odds. That's what, that's what management means in the dictionary. And I don't, like, I don't like that feeling of against all odds, I'm going to get through my day. Huh? Like, I don't like that. So do you want it to be, I want to chant, like, I'm trying to get, get a word here. Because you're <laughs> off, like, it's essentially because Jen can hear manage and go, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I do that. I'm in charge of my stress. Yeah. You hear cope, and what I'm hearing is like it's like a loss. Yeah. I'm losing to stress. For sure. Yes, exactly. When my stress is telling me how to feel and what I do with my time and what the things I say out loud and say in my head, that's losing to me. I'm losing that battle, and I don't want to lose the battle. I don't even want to be in the battle in the first place. You can't choose a battle, right, Ryan? I mean, it's stress, it's stress is just what's happening around you. You don't get, you don't necessarily choose that. Yeah, there's a, I, there's total like external stress in my life, and then there's internal pressure. That normally, when I'm stressed, it's that I've chosen to let the external stress kind of embed and grow within my mind without doing anything about it, and that, uh, that season is when I can get overloaded and stressed and just not be myself that I want to be because I've let the external stuff drive the train. I, I hear what you're saying. I'm also like, what what is so stressful to you? <laughs> I'm not saying that flippantly. I I'm just saying know. like, like I've heard you talk in abstract terms of like it and calling it stress, but like, what yeah. is it? Well, th- and so this is, this I think was my point, I, I hope is my point. Is that the stress, the way I feel the most stress is internal in my head. So I am talking to myself about how, like I'm psyching myself up. If you guys could hear the script, the running things that I say to myself in my head, I am trying to positive self-talk my day all day long. Yeah. And that is so tiring. I want to be naturally good at just being instead of having to prep myself up and you can do this just to make dinner. Like that is stressful to me. And that's just the season I'm in. Well, what if, I don't know. I, I don't know. We, we, this is happening real time, right? This, yes. We do not have a script for behind the mic. <laughs> what if you stopped? Stopped what? Psyching yourself up. Well, I don't know. Like. I've never tried that. Like, cause you're saying it's not working. Oh, for sure. No. And, and I want to be. It, it works for the moment. Sure. And you're saying, I want to be that person. But right, right. now you're not. No, I'm not. Mm-mm. So you, you can, you can, like, I'm just wondering, instead of saying, I'm going to take everything it takes to pump myself up to do this. Yeah. Maybe there's a part to go, no, I'm going to just deal with what really is mm. and then see where that, where that takes me. Because it feels to me like, I don't know, it feels to me like it's your, you, I don't know. I'm trying too hard. I, I don't know if I hear you trying too hard. I think, I think I hear you saying that you're expecting failure in everything and you just need to sometimes make the dinner. It, it, it's like, is someone grading you on dinner? Right, no. No. I'm not even grading myself on dinner. Yeah, you're a good cook. I've had food over here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe it's, a, maybe it's 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 an inner critic of like expectation versus reality of just being able to be like, I mean, that was kind of the breakthrough for you for like I'm Mother of the Year was right. like, I'm going to celebrate the small things. Yeah. And if, if there's some other things that are a freaking dumpster fire right now, like, but I don't know. And I think there's a part two. 
And now it's, I had a really good thought in my brain just chased it out. Oh, I know what it was. You said in your, um, you said in, uh, in Lisa's pieces, that part about you went to the Bible and it was like, and I get it. You see some cast your cares upon him and all things. It's like, yeah, those, they sound so abstract of mm-hmm. like, what am I going to, yeah, cast these. Okay. Toss them over here. When they're a boomerang, they keep coming back And the thing that was causing me stress didn't change. Right. Mm. But one thing that, that um, I was taught to do, and I, and I try to do in some of the discipleship huddles I lead, is, is instead of like a, a crazy like, hey, you're feeling crazy about this, and it feels overwhelming, so give yourself the best pep talk you can, is like helping people stop and go, here's, and you talk about this all the time, about getting the lies out. Yeah. Of saying, like, it's not like a necessarily pep talk, but here, here's what I'm believing and I think this is that part of, of how, how we practically cast our cares right. or invite Jesus into these things. Is what I've had people do is, is literally, here's, here's the bad news that's in your brain about the stress, about the whatever, whatever. Okay, yeah. stop right now. No flowery, you know, pep talk. Just if Jesus were sitting here right now and he was looking you right in the eyes, which he can do because we just talked about Christmas, because he's here for you now, year round and eternally. <laughs> like, what does Jesus want you to know? about what's happening right and then instead of it being i'm giving myself a pep talk about what i could do or something maybe it's more about like here's what i here's what i'm what i'm getting from jesus instead of it being a pep talk maybe it's just i just needed enough of that to cope with what's happening right now yeah i don't know i like it it's interesting i i it's intriguing to me that jen who is a very structured management person she hears management and goes yeah that's high gear for me. Yeah. But when you heard cope, that was a trigger of like, no, that sounds like failure. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I, I remember um, Bob Taylor, Taylor Guitars, great guitar maker. I remember him talk, telling a story about when he was starting Taylor Guitars, and he literally, I mean, was betting his whole life on his dream of this and his ability to make guitars. He was living in his uh, sister's garage mm-hmm. in San Diego, and it was like he was married, like, you know, he should be putting together a life, and here yeah. he is, I can make guitars. And he freaking can because yeah. Taylor Guitars is Taylor Guitars. <laughs> but he said through the growth process of that, I've always thought about this. He's, he's like, you're always doing two things at the same time. You're always coping with what is mm-hmm. and organizing what will be. Coping and organizing, coping and organizing. And like, I don't know if that would, if that would help you, Lisa, or maybe it helps you when you're listening right now that you may be in a place where you have stress and, and it's, it's external, it's internal, it's whatever it is, and it would be cool we talked about last week it'd be cool to get a magic wand and poof like it's gone the situation is healed it's fixed but it doesn't usually get fixed that quickly but maybe if it's a situation of saying you know what there are going to be things that i am just coping with Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm just getting through it and guess what i'm not going to beat myself up at it and say oh if i was enough i would no like i'm just going to make it through right now and guess what that's totally okay but I'm also organizing the things that need to be fixed and shifted and, and what that healthy process looks like. And so most of my energy is going through what I'm constructing and organizing, not sitting back here spending much time on coping. That's, the, that's, where, the, that's where my shift needs to take place then. Yeah, over into the organizing maybe. I don't know. I'll let it roll around in my brain for yeah. a while. We're not licensed counselors. Stand by. Yeah. But yeah, it's a, this could all be horrible advice for you, Lisa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? No, I, I but I, I know it's got to hit. It's got to hit with you uh, as you're listening. Is that we life is, t- is hard? Yeah. For all of us, and there's things that cause stress all the time. And and how do you allow that to be something that doesn't just bury you, and keep you just you know sitting in a basement somewhere, but to be able to move through it and say, you know what, I can cope with this right now. I can manage this right now as I move forward. Uh, believe what's true about me, what God has said is true about me, what's true about me because of who I am in him and who he is, mm-hmm. uh, and begin to make those strides. So, good stuff. Last thing we talked about, we just got a few minutes to hit this one, is the uh, is the no spend November. <laughs> mm. We've all done some kind of no do this for a month deal. Yeah. Complete teetotaling, abstinence from mm. carbs, french fries, mm. alcohol. Mm. All the good things. Lisa, oh, no. <laughs> Lisa, you guys were doing no spin November. Yeah. And the yeah. funny thing was mm-hmm. you declared it as a month of no spending. Yeah. And then and then I cheated my way around the system mm. because we obviously have to buy groceries 
to live, you know, feed the family. And Praise so God, you go to a super Kroger. I go where to Where you this... could literally have probably bought a couch in there as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. And I did sneak into the bag, into the grocery bill, a $40 Chipotle gift card so I could eat the Chipotle lunch that we do every Monday as a team. It is a great lunch. It's delicious. Love a burrito. Right. The community's and... pretty good too, but the burritos are just so good. Exactly. <laughs> so both, I'm like, I, could I, could I, I, I could. Maybe, okay, maybe next week. Maybe oh gosh! Next week. You're added pressure for yeah. yourself. Oh boy! I'll I'll pack my PBJ and my chips and my little string cheese, mm. and I'll sit there and watch you guys eat Chipotle. That would be actually sacrificial in the thing that I was supposed to do last week and didn't. Very possible. I don't know, Ryan. What do you think about the, the taking something into like the forbidden fruit like category? I'm going to answer your question in a sec. Okay. I hear you saying when you said <laughs> I I, che- I cheated the system. Uh-huh. I think. You, 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 what I hear you saying underneath it is that you are averse to organization and boundaries, but I think that you see the value in them, but you're scared to wade into that territory because of how it might disrupt this, this chaos that you've become accustomed and comfortable with, even though you don't like it. Because you're like, I, I went around the, the <laughs> system and I'm like, well, system, e- <laughs> system equals organization. I don't like systems and structures. <laughs> No, I do. I do. I love them. I, you know, you, you guys would be surprised to know that I have started putting in my calendar every uh, accounting for every hour of my week. Yeah. To make sure I'm doing all the things I need to be doing. Okay. <laughs> you don't like that? I don't know. The, I just think I'm not following it, but it's in my calendar. You're not following it. No. What do you mean? Well, I'm doing the best I can at it, but like, you can't put ten things in an hour. You know, so I'm just not the most important ones. I'm do you just, have time for like free time and just like oh no, just I don't open have time? Any free time. Oh no, 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 not this season. Why don't you have free time? Because I'm doing too many things. Why? Because I like them all. Hmm. <laughs> this is not about this is not about me, you guys. <laughs> someone changed. The it's subject, resonating please. with someone out there. I know it is, though. Oh. I just heard you say, "I don't like the system," <clears throat> so I found a way around it. I found a way around the system. Yeah. Systems can work and be good. And I'm I'm an artistic creative person and I I'm married to a hardcore organized yeah. yes, like but you are also Mr. Spreadsheet Keeper. Like I wasn't you to always be that to, way though. But back to two thousand five. He Darren, he just told me this week yes. that he found a spreadsheet from two thousand five where he was doing like getting paid seventy dollars for a gig this night. He could tell you the schedule, how many gigs he played and how much he got paid for them from two thousand five. So don't don't tell me if you <laughs> are not a structure person. You are systems structure. I've gotten process. even better at it having been married to my wife, Lauren, for there 12 years. Go. She's there you hyper. Go. But yeah, it's made in it. you naturally. Yeah. You enjoy it naturally. Yeah. Here's what I think is interesting. And I think that this is something that, that is not just your no spin November or whatever it would be, is that you didn't like the system that you yourself imposed upon yourself. Yes, I agreed to the system. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think there's that, that that when we get into a place where it's like, I'm going to absolutely 100% not do this. Now, some people, that is easier. My wife is much easier. I actually do. It's easier for me to say I'm absolutely not doing this thing because I just check it off. I don't even think. What becomes more challenging actually for me is to be like, I'm going to find moderation in this. Yeah. But it seems to me like the thing that I appreciate about God, I guess, is that he knows – he knows and he appreciates the heart's desire. Right. Hmm. Like, you know, for David, hey, that guy's a, a man after my own heart. Execution, not that great sometime <laughs> if you go back and read David's mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. But what is God? Re- God says, here's what I want people to remember about David. It wasn't that season where it was just an absolute dumpster fire and he was doing all these things. What I know about that man is that he's a man after my own heart. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So God judges the heart. We judge the intentions, right? God judges the heart. And, and I think that might be something to, you know, to look into. And it could be, you know, whether it's no spend November for you or it's, uh, you know, October or one, some, whatever the ones we threw out, right, is maybe you've tried one and you totally tanked at it, whatever yeah. it was, no spending, no eating, no smoking, no drinking, whatever, is understand that God's not mad at you or disappointed in you or like disillusioned. Oh, my gosh, I thought she was going to do it. No, he, he know, knew you weren't, right? <laughs> <laughs> but his point is, I like that the, the, your, your heart's intention is to bring structure and order and whatever else it is. 
um, it might be a process then just to be able to embrace the grace of like how we walk through this. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it made for decent radio this week. <laughs> it really did. It, did. it really did. Happy to help. Yes. Happy to help, guys. <laughs> Listen, uh, if we can help you out, maybe uh, something we talked about this morning, maybe we didn't wrap it up with a bow for you, but we made you think deeper than you had, made you get curious about yourself. That's what we want to do. We want to invite you into this process of becoming who you were born to be. And uh, thanks for listening to this podcast. If we can help you out, maybe pray for you specifically, or you have a question, you say, hey, here's the specific thing I'm going through, and I'd really like you guys to, to help me out with this. Please, please, please email us, either Darren, Ryan, or Lisa at blackbirdmission.com. And we'd love to interact with you. Or you can also just send us a message on Facebook. Uh, that's at, just at radiotheology.com. Uh, but we really appreciate you downloading this last week. Uh, one of the most downloaded episodes in seven days we've ever had. I want to thank you guys for downloading that episode. And uh, please, uh, if you can, review the podcast and uh, share it with a friend that might need the same encouragement. And uh, until we talk to you next week, don't forget these three things. God's for you, not against you. He's near you, not far from you. And he's created you on purpose and for purpose. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Behind the Mic. Thanks for listening to Behind the Mic. For more episodes, go to radiotheology.com. 